there are very few women in the parliament. Actually, it's a very serious problem for us. I'll be very lucky if I have more women in the parliament because I have better behavior, <laughs> more contribution. <laughs> but I must tell you there are two reasons. That is, first is the culture of this part of the world, Sri Lanka and other places. The ladies don't want to come forward for politics. It's with greatest difficulty that I, as the deputy leader of the party at that time, induced a lot of ladies to come forward. Now we brought about some changes in the legislation. The 25% of the membership of the local government institutions now must go to ladies. So I hope they will mature and in time to come, they will come to the parliament. We have about 53% of the population are female. But when, so therefore, theoretically, they should have half the parliament in the parliament, we have over 53%. It's not happening. It's not happening because the women don't vote for women. The time is now opportune to promote further skill building for professional women, to enable them to break the glass ceiling and take the lead in institutions and enterprises, both in government and private sector. During my own career, both in the private sector and government sectors and in politics. I have observed that female professionals are very committed and focused on the job at hand. The unique ability to combine and harmonize family lives with their professions, no doubt, contribute to the well-being of the family and the society, which is essential for the success of our economy and for our social program. At a time when Sri Lanka aspires to be a commercial hub in the Indian Ocean, leveraging our geographical location, the contribution by female professionals will become even more important as we create a web commercial partnership with all trading nations of the world.